Hi, I'm Michelle again, and this is part two of a video I just started um, about my 2022-2023 school year. And um, the first half of the video will tell you kind of the reasons why behind what we're, what I did, and then also give you kind of everything up till about the point where my kids finished up all of their individual schoolwork. I did want to point out before I keep going, um, one thing that also was motivating me, if I was completely honest, is that I was looking for a way to be cost effective. I have four sons and sometimes when you go through the big companies there, it can be expensive to get into the next level up for your children. And um, I also started to realize as a teacher, I've gathered so many things over the years. And so when I looked around my house and realized what I did have already, I thought to myself, how could I use the sources I've already been given and and then create from here? And so that kind of led me on the rabbit trail of trying to create this curriculum in the first place was to say, hey, there's a lot of options I already have. Let's try to use it and it ended up working out really well. So the rest of this video will walk through the rest of our day, um, starting with what happened after our individual work was done. Now I'm going to keep talking about the rest of our day. So we'd already done our Bible breakfast. We've done our um, our group work of geography at the table with different things mixed in and then our individual work. So that was like the best for me as a teacher because individual work time was like each kid doing their own thing. I could breathe, put a little laundry in, maybe even just drink some water. Uh, but I was able to help each kid if they needed it. But most of the time they were working so independently, they really didn't need my help. So that was actually kind of reassuring for me just to, again, breathe and say, okay, we've, I've done some focus time. Now we get to have some time for them to do their focus time. After each person, now each of them were different levels. So like my youngest always went through his stuff super fast. And then when he was done, each of them had science. Now here's what I did for science this year. So I have kind of like two different levels of kids. So I've got my two older ones and my two younger ones. And so I batched them together because in terms of interest and levels, I was like, okay, they can kind of work together. So I looked through through my co collection of books. Okay. So as a homeschool teacher, you realize over the years, you collect a lot of books. And I was just astonished at the amount of nonfiction science type books that I had in my collection already. So I thought, you know what? instead of spending on a big giant curriculum, why don't I use what we have and then supplement in places that I need? So what I did is each month I took a different theme based on the book. So I had all my books, I categorized them in terms of categories. And I said, okay, I've got a ton of books on the natural sciences, or I've got a ton of books on astronomy or a ton of books on dinosaurs. I mean, just pick your category. You can go through it. So what I did is I set up assignments for each group of kids. And so when my youngest was done with this individual, he'd just go right into science on his own and there'd be a book assignment. So like the first month we did, we start with bugs. So I had all these bug books. And so I would give an assignment to my younger ones and I'd have them read like three pages in this little you know board book. And then they would have to draw one of the bugs that they learned about, write its name, and then maybe some cool fact about it. And that was, that was like nice and simple, easy for the two younger ones to do. And then my older kids would have to read maybe more pages in a separate bug book or insect, I guess I should say. And then they also would have to draw and label, but maybe do three bugs insects and then talk about them specifically. So that was um, an easy kind of science thing. And then they would do just different things. We did bugs. We did, I think, birds somewhere in there. Trees. Oh, September we did trees because then the trees were changing colors and that kind of stuff. So we did that. And then we also did, um, what else? I'm sorry. I'm, there's so many options in here. Different. Oh, Oh, we did stuff like, but yeah, we did astronomy and that kind of stuff. And then here's the thing. So throughout the year, I used all the books I had, and that was great because they can just do that at their own pace. And I have some like DK books that are awesome and that we weren't really using them. And so I thought, well, at least let's just use what we have. Then it, it, what was neat is it allowed them to go, oh, we have these books and they might read it further. Then what we did is I used a website that I had been hearing about, but I was kind of hesitant and I was like, eh. so sometimes in a month we might, I might not have enough book pages. So what I would try to do is I would balance between reading a book and doing generation genius. So I don't know if you've heard about generation genius, but it is, it's kind of, I don't know. I grew up in the eighties and there was like Mr. Wizard. It kind of reminds me of Mr. Wizard where you'd watch a TV show and there'd be like a guy who was super excited about science who would do these experiments that you couldn't do at home because you don't have the equipment. Um, and then they talk about 
higher levels of science that you didn't know about and it would walk you through some things so we went i went to made an account we can get you can get free access for a while but then you have to make an account and we would use at least two separate subjects of those videos each month so if we were in a section about chemistry i would pick two of his chemistry videos and add those in and then how they were divided up i could make it so that they would do some diy activities they'd have some review they have some assessment videos um and so i'm gonna go ahead and take you to that website so you can see what i'm talking about all right, so this is the website for Generation Genius, which again, I've heard about over the years and I've been kind of curious about. Um, I will say ahead of time that it is secular. Um, so when you are in certain videos, you may have to discuss that with your children if you have different world uh, viewpoints about the age of the earth and that kind of stuff, which we had great discussions about actually. And some of the videos gave us a chance to have those discussions. So um, for example, with our science, if I had, did, if I had done um, like animals in general, um, what I would try to go through is if you can notice there are all grades so if you specifically have three to five or third to fifth graders then you can go into those specific videos um, if you are looking for a specific topic like animals you could look up by topic and so what I would like to, what I would do is I would just look through the videos and I would say, okay, which of these might be interesting to my children, first of all, but also something that is good to, is good to know. So I would pick maybe two of these videos to do each month. So let's just think, let me just pick this one. Um, oops, this is grades K to, K to two, but that's okay. So the different levels all kind of have different things. So in the lesson, there's going to be about a 10 minute give or take video that will walk through some of the just, I don't know, the, the guy himself is a little on the cheesy side, but in a way that's good for kids. I feel like they'll they'll really enjoy it. Um, and then the, the guy has other kids in the video as well, and they go through all the concepts. So it tells you on their website um, what they will learn. And it also has discussion questions. So one of the first one of the days of science I would do with them was do the before video questions with them. And then we would do vocabulary. So I would walk them through the vocabulary. Now, my older kids, I would actually make them write out the words and the definitions. Um, my younger kids, we just kind of would play a game with them or do something that would make it interesting for them. So that was like our first day of this specific science. And then on the second day, I would have them watch the video and then do the after video questions. Now, if they were doing this individually, they could just watch it on a tablet with the headphones um, or go in a room and do it separately. If the two kids that were doing science together were ready at the same time, then I would have them watch together and do the activities together. Sometimes specifically, I would even wait till both of them were done to, to work on their science. So if my one kid was done early, I'd have like, he could play a small group of games or something while he was waiting. Um, so then on the third day of this science, I would then do um, reading material. So in each of these, they'll have a, um, you can, I would, I would download them and print them off, but depending on what you would do with your child is different. Um, so then there's interesting information that basically talks about some of the stuff from the videos, but it also just gives general information. And then, um, on that same day that they did the reading material, they would do this DIY thing sometimes. And I say sometimes because there were some activities that would have been really hard to do with the materials I had around my house, or just, I just didn't want to spend the money on it. So the DIY has a video with it, which actually is in the weekly video as well. So if you're trying to keep this a secret, you'll want to watch the video with them and kind of fast forward through the DIY section of the video. Um, so it gives you some instructions. You can print them all out and then it walks you through the DIY activity. So that was one day of science for them on this. And then my last day, I would make them watch the video again, especially if it was on a really high level um, thing. And then they would do a quiz, which I thought was great. Um, they, sorry, this is a PDF version of the quiz. You can print off and do a PDF version. Um, I did that a couple times, but I liked doing this one, um, which was kind of like the Kahoot type games. Um, and they would play the game and then that would allow them to get some practice. So it was just a real simple 10 questions, but it made it interactive and it let them feel like it was a competition. So this is how it's kind of set up. So if they, I'm just going to totally make a wrong answer. If it gave you the wrong answer, it did give you a chance later on to redo that type of thing. So those were kind of how I set up my days, at least for my younger kids. Now, let me show you a video for the older kids. Um, and um, let's see, I guess we'll stick with animals, but just go further down. Um, so 
Ooh, there you go. Chemical reactions. So obviously you get to higher concepts when you get to the, the higher levels. And they do some really great experiments in here, which make it that makes it worth it. And the video quality is really good too. I will show you though that if you wanted to go deeper than I did in some of these science ones, they do have all these teacher resources as well. So they give you lesson plans and teacher guides. So in the lesson plan, if you wanted to go into more depth, they have all of these lesson plans um, in here that tell you, you know, why they're doing, they give you materials, they give you even specific um, experiment ideas you can do. So often what I do with my older kids is when we were um, walking through some of the reading material days, we would do some of the experiments that, that would be doable. Now, this one is not so much uh, for me able to do, but sometimes they'd have like video connections. So one of the things we were doing with astronomy is they connected us to a video of one of the Mars perseverance i think landers one of the landers on the on the on mars and it was neat because it allowed them to kind of plan their own thing and it gave them a clip there's usually pretty short clips and that would give them some science areas as well so Generation Genius has really been helpful for us to what I call fill in the gaps because, you know, you'd have the books where you get to learn a lot of stuff. We had a chemistry book and did some chemistry experiments ourselves. We would go out into nature. We would do different things out um, and try to make everything as real as possible. But every so often you realize, OK, I don't have as many skills in science as I, as I as some of these people do. So I, that's why I went ahead and said this was worth it for me to pay the subscription Um with this. So that is the genius of a generation genius. And I would recommend it at least to explore it because it is free to explore. Like when you first go onto their website, you can um, try to think if yet. Yeah, so if science, oh, they also have math too. If you're looking for something um, with math, they also have some videos about math as well. So pretty interesting. Again, you can watch them for free for at least a certain amount of time. I think about 10 videos. And then after that, you do have to um, go over instead and pay for that. Okay, so if you're starting to feel confident with yourself now, just remember that the Lord will, will lead you to all these different websites, resources, things that you need, and that you can do this. You can do this and make it affordable for your family if that is something that really speaks to you. Okay, so now I've gone through this day. At this point, you might be thinking, man, is this like two o'clock in the afternoon? Well, the irony is that by the time we'd gone through all this stuff and then finished up with science, it was probably around lunch. So this was the time I would break as soon as each child was done with their science, they got to have a break so they could do, they could read books, they could play some video games because at this point they'd been kind of working hard for a long time, um, go outside, play with the dog, whatever we needed to do. Um, and then I would make some lunch and then at lunchtime we'd sit down and I would always have a story to read to them because again, when you come up with cultures all around the world, they have different stories that define them and that make them unique to um, who they are. So I had this book, I had had this book since probably a garage sale when my kids were like four and I'd never read it because it was, so it's fairy tales. It's like a giant fairy tale book. But what was funny is as I was reading it, when they were like in my head, I would read it and, um, and think, oh, they are not ready for this content because it was, some of those fairy tales are very uh, uniquely written so that you would, you know, in a way they would scare their children into not doing certain things. So uh, I was like, you know what? These a fairy tale book had stories for at least six continents. Obviously, there's not that many for Antarctica. There were some from the Arctic region um, of Canada and Inuit areas. So that that at least we did for when we got to Antarctica. Um, but so anyways, what was neat was that it allowed me to read a story a day at lunch. So we'd sit down and we'd read a story. Now we learned pretty quickly on that some of these stories were crazy. Uh, and, and I mean crazy in the sense of like the violence level, like in the European fairy tales, we were just shocked at some of the violence. And I mean, I have boys. And so to them, it was almost like we were all laughing about it. It wasn't necessarily scary. It was more just like, wow, this is crazy. Why would someone write like this? But then as we got through different continents, we started to see different themes emerge. And we would see how when the Europeans went to different cultures, some of their stories came and then uh, blossomed, I guess you could say. So we would see like Cinderella versions in Africa and in South America and in some of the Native American. Well, not, I don't know if it was that, but some of the North American ones. And it was just interesting to say like, oh, this is another variation of this story, uh, but different. And then the other thing is we learned that I think the South American, African and Asian ones were probably our favorites. Um, they were written really well. The Asian ones were written very beautifully and simply and just, I don't know, those are our favorites by, by far. 
Um, so that was what we did at lunchtime. If I didn't have enough books, sometimes I'd have a book laying around the house to be like a short picture book that would have um, a lesson or something that would be related to that continent. So that was kind of a fun way to do our lunches. And then after lunch, again, we'd take a nice long break outside and get some exercise and move around and that kind of stuff. And then we would have what I call like sit down time, I guess you could say. So finally, after all this time, we'd have the last part of our day, which was our literature section. Now, I had been faithful to Heart of Dakota for so long and that I really, really loved the resources and drawn in the heart of reading. And so I made a whole long video about drawn into the heart of reading. It's a great resource, but I had also gotten to the point where I'd use it so many times that I was starting to get, what's the word? Um, not, there's not even a good adjective here, but I was ready for something fresh. So I wanted to freshen things up. So I went online and I found a whole bunch of free teacher resources of genres. Uh, we went through different genres of literature throughout the year. So at the beginning of the year, we started with um, humor. So I went through my entire book collection at my house, which I've had years and years. And I, for each of my four children, would find a different book related that could be in the humor genre. And I think throughout all the whole year, I maybe only had to purchase two books. I had so many in my collection that I could use. So the humor books, we started out and I would sit all of them at the table and we'd talk about humor as a genre. And we'd watch some videos and talk about the genre of humor. And then um, I, I, from these free resources, I was able to pull off of the, the internet of within that genre. We would look at things like character and setting and plot and how the you know the plot line is and I would make a packet for each children in the humor category and then so each day I would this is the part that took a little work but I so each book I would take the book like for example um my son one son read the book wayside school is falling down so in that book I would go through and I'd, I'd I knew how many days I was going to read it in August and September. So I, I wrote out how many days we were going to read it. I had to divide the book up and then write down the page number. So that took a little bit of time. And then I knew we would spend about three to four days on a project. So that was set up ahead of time. So they would, on the day they would sit down, they would read the pages that were assigned and then they'd have a worksheet that they'd be filling out over a couple of days related to setting and plot and that kind of stuff, like I said before. And um, so what was neat then is that for the projects, I was able to pull from John into the heart of reading projects and kind of make something work for each child um, for that. So this was the one section that probably took a lot of work. However, they had a lot of great reading time. And then there were some books some of them had read before, but they had got to rediscover them and go, oh yeah, I do like this book. So we went through the general genres. We did humor, nonfiction, uh, realistic fiction, historic fiction, adventure, mystery. I'm sure there's there's like a couple I'm going to miss off some of my head, but we did them all. And so that was a nice way to Again, give them work that they could do. They could focus and enjoy their reading. They could uh, do their own individual work. And then the projects were really fun. I, I want to guard their privacy. I, I won't put any videos of their stuff, but they did some really funny things throughout the year. And again, that just allowed them to see literature. So all in all, in their school days, they were able to do a lot of Bible time. They were able to do a look at world geography Kind of like skimming across the surface like we couldn't go super deep into every continent but we were at least able to get a general look at the culture looking at the maps of those countries trying to see the history in a glimpse but the the, the music the the art the food so that we can kind of get a better understanding of those cultures and then each of them were able to practice handwriting and writing skills grammar skills um, some form of computer, whether it was coding, typing, um, or just general computer skills, they all were able to practice their math. They were all able to do PE. I'm missing some of them on their own. And then together we were able to read out loud literature and talk about it and then also do individual reading and literature. So this crazy plan that I came up with at the beginning of the year, we got to the last day and I had... Oh, and I put field trips in there too. So don't feel like I'm some crazy person that just makes 180 days crazy. So like towards the end, we were actually, I live, I live in a place where there's a very famous race that happens every year in May. And so the last few days of school, we went to go visit and actually got to tour um, that race track. And uh, we did a lot of, of history of of that particular race as part of our end of the year school as well. Because, you know, if you live in a state where that's important, you should probably go and see what's important to that state. But anyway, so we had just a great time. And when it was done, I was just so thrilled that I had followed the Lord in that because it really was the right choice for our family. So encouragement to any of you who've made it through this whole thing, 
that you can listen to the Lord. And if he's prompting you to create something for your family specifically, trust that. It may feel daunting. It may take you four months to create and look and tweak and get all the supplies that you need. But if you do it faithfully, you'll be able to find something that works for your family so that by the end of the school year, you'll go, that was great. You still are ready for the summer, but at least you can you can put away your supplies and just go, that was a really fun year. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where we ended up um, in this past school year. And this, the Lord has prompted me with other things for this coming school year. So at some point I'll update um, with things that are changing and, and moving and, and shifting for this next year, but it's exciting. And so I'm just thankful that we get to have a great God who can who can lead us and, and, and keep us in his in his hands. So have a great day and hope that you and your family are having a wonderful summer.